welcome to Let's Talk About It. I'm your hostess, Paulette Henson. Today is Saturday, September 3rd, 2022. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm so excited to have you all here joining me today. We have a special guest with a ton of information today. I'm so excited to welcome her. But before I get into our interview today, I'd like to say I don't own the rights to this music. This is Roger Troutman, formerly known as Zap, and this is I Heard It Through the Grapevine. So enjoy. If you are celebrating a birthday or a special event, I wish you all the best. Enjoy your special day. So with that, we are not going to waste time. I'd like to introduce my guest on the show today. Her name is Mylisa Adams, and she is a speaking coach. She has an abundance of information to share with all of us. If you're an entrepreneur, small business, and you're looking for you know, ways to generate more viewers and people to your network. She is going to just enlighten us on her technology, what she's involved in. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce my very special guest today, my Lisa Adams. So we are back with my guest, Maya Lisa Adams. She is the founder and CEO of Maya Lisa Speaks, an Idaho-based global TEDx talk coaching firm. Over the last six years, Ms. Adams has helped more than 100 clients understand how to land, nail, and use their TEDx talk to grow their Im and impact and increase their income, their business income. As a global keynote speaker, she has addressed hundreds of individuals, including the International Women's Day Conference and BYU Idaho, where she is an adjunct professor in public speaking and professional presentations before starting her business, Ms. Adams was a regional sales manager for a $1.4 billion value global software company. Wow. Ms. Adams is also an esteemed member of Christopher, help me with- Hi, Christopher Kai. Christopher Kai, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for you. joining us. Tell us a little bit about what you do and just help our, our entrepreneurs out there. Well, anyone who's heard of a TED Talk, if you look there in the, in the back, you'll see there's a red circle, a red dot. Yeah. And the TED stage has made that red circle or that red dot famous. And the TED, TED Talk started clear back in 1984. And TED stands for Technology, Entertainment, and Design. Wow. And it's an annual conference that happens in Vancouver, BC now, started in California. If you think back to California, that's what they're known for, technology, entertainment, design. And so these experts would get together once a year and they they would just have a short conversation where they added to what was new that they'd le learned from last year to this year. And so there are ideas that could be implemented. Use this lighting, use this film, use this typographical user interface. And then they became so popular that people said, could we hold our own TED event locally? And so they started giving licenses. TED would give a license. And when I started, it's now seven years ago, helping with TEDx events and helping TEDx speakers and so forth, there were only 300 licenses given. But today there are well over 3000 licenses out there, closer to actually 4,500 licenses. And so uh, when you see TEDx, like you see this X there and whoops, other side over here, that stands for independently organized. And it's usually a regional. So they'll, they'll give a license to a, a university. They'll give a license to um, a city or to a suburb of a bigger city. Like I think Denver has 
you know, Cherry Creek and Mile High and so forth, even though they're in the Denver area. So there might be more than one, even in the metropolitan area that you live in. Mm -hmm. And there might be one in a smaller town that you live in as well, or at the university there. Wow. Wow. That is awesome. That's definitely a technology that sounds very interesting, intriguing for a new business. So give us a, a little insight. If I were a, an entrepreneur, how would this help my business? Um, let's say I'm selling uh, Tupperware, for example. <laughs> yeah. So that's the crazy thing is that on a TEDx stage is different than other stages. So typically when we speak, we're, we speak and we get paid or we speak for free. We make an offer to be a part of a program or buy something right there on the spot. Okay. Ted, TEDx is neither of those. You don't get paid to speak and you don't pay to speak either one. And you can't even talk about, you can't pitch your business. And so that's the crazy thing is that business owners still can give a TEDx talk and they can talk about how, what they learned from this or how their business got started. It's not so much about their business. It is about, for example, the idea behind it. So a TEDx talk is not meant to be inspirational or motivational. It's not meant to be a sales pitch. It's meant to be, here's an idea that can be implemented. Let me tell you about Tasha. Tasha is a very successful businesswoman, but she didn't even speak about business. Her daughter has severe OCD and over a 20 year period as they worked with their daughter, they came up with a little idea, a little technique that they can help her when she gets so um, obsessed, obsessive compulsive disorder, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that they can help starve that OCD monster. And so she, she shared that idea on stage and she has 800,000 views. Wow. Now the really, yeah, the really cool thing of that is she landed a new job. She became the vice president of a company because of that TEDx talk where she didn't even talk about business. Wow. Wow, that is amazing. Amazing. So let me ask you, what triggered your um, enthusiasm to get into this? <laughs> Yeah, I, it all happened very organically when I, um, after raising my kids or they were partway raised and it was necessary to go back to work, I was teaching high school for one year as a fill-in and a student came to me and said, Mrs. Adams, Mrs. Adams, have you heard about the golden circles? And I said, no, Reagan, what are the golden circles? And he said, you know, Simon Sinek, it, pe or organizations you know, focus too much on the what and the how instead of on the why. And people don't care what you do and how you do it. They care why you do it. Just like you're asking me, why do you do it? And so that's when I first learned about TED Talks, even though I had been a software rep in the Silicon Valley um, when they were happening and didn't even know about it, but they weren't popular then because they weren't on YouTube. Mm. So once it was on YouTube and he had discovered this on YouTube and he was so excited about it. The really cool thing about that is as I started helping, which I'll tell you the story, but how I started helping in a minute in a local TEDx event, this one that you see right here, TEDx Rexburg, the same, the same student five years later got to come on the stage and share his idea, which is as a student, he said, we are wasting so much money by renting when we could get together and buy a home together. And then when you graduate, you sell your shares in that home to somebody else. So that was his idea on stage. So that was really cool for me to think the very student who introduced me to TEDx talks got to stand and give his idea on stage. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Wow. But very then interesting. Go ahead. But then after that, I was asked to teach a public speaking class at the university. And from that, I found out about these two stages, Rex Bergenado Falls, that were holding events for the first time. And you can only have 100 people in your when you're organizing a TEDx event until you get more training from TED. And so because there were so few and they found out and they asked, like, who are you and what do you do? I said, well, I teach public speaking. He said, really? Would you, would you coach our speakers? Because some of them this year could have really used some help. So I started being a coach in two places. They're just 30 miles apart from each other. And I've been doing that for Oh, since 2015, I guess it is, however long that is now. <laughs> wow, that is so awesome. So awesome. There, a lot of our viewers are small business owners, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, they're realtors, teachers. Yeah. And so when you talk about the how and the, not the how, the why mm -hmm. 
uh, of any type of business, would that lead a person to think, okay, talk, should they look into this for a purpose of giving somebody an idea or how, like a simplified method of, you know, their daily operations, how, like say for a real, real estate agent. Mm -hmm. So maybe one person, one agent may say, hey, you know, this is a good idea to take this route and this is what I do and it eliminates X, Y, and Z. Yes, it's, yes, it is. And so what you, what makes a great TEDx talk is something that hasn't been heard before, something, or if it has been heard before, you have a fresh take on it. Like since last year, what's changed? So we've just gone through the pandemic and lots of things changed because of that. We've gone through the great resignation. There's a lot of political unrest. There's a loss of social divide, all of those types of things. How does, how does whatever's happening today impact? Like this is what a TEDx stage wants to know. What's your idea? What will people take away? Why are you the one to, to, to give it? And um, so it has to be something that's really kind of given freely to help. Right. But yet, because you do, then it grows your credibility and you're seen on the stage. And then you're offered speaking gigs, you're offered jobs, you're offered book deals, you're, depending upon who you are and how well you do and what your idea is. But it always comes down to the idea that you have to share. Right, right. Yeah. Wow, that, so, that's a very interesting concept. Well, I had someone just uh, recently, Erasmo was his name, and he had wanted to, um, he said, I happen to be on YouTube mm -hmm. trying to find something that would speak to me to listen to, and I happened to click on this thumbnail of this man, and it was Jim Rohn, and he, he basically said, you can change your life if you change how you think about things. And he said, so I took him seriously, and I completely changed my life. And then I thought, I thought back about how did that happen? Well, there are six things that have to be in place for this to happen. So he just recently got on the stage in Texas and shared how those, what those six things are and, and how it changed his life. Now, someone like Brene Brown, who has done 10 years of research on guilt and shame, and when she speaks, then she has a lot of data behind her. And, and Ted is always looking for someone who, you know, they're innovative. They've got some science behind it. They've got something to back it up. So what we don't want to do is, they don't want you to sell your business, sell your politics, your religion, or your woo-woo. It has to be science-based. So like if you're a health and wellness coach, for example, mm -hmm. you can certainly come and talk about some aspect of that, just as long as it's not something that's just a one-off that's happened, but but has um, some science behind it. Mm, awesome. That's very interesting that you mentioned science. I have a background in environmental science. I nice. worked for an environmental agency uh -huh. uh, for almost 30 years. Uh, yeah. The, and so it's you saying, okay, what do I have to the conversation, Paulette, in environmental safety or, or any of those areas? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it's just your little thin slice of the world. Because remember back to the original intent of Ted was, what's new this year? What's going to help people? What's something they can implement? Right. And then the reason you're doing it is because it's something you tried and it worked and you're sharing it. Right. Yeah. That's, that's really good. And also uh, going back to the call that we had yesterday, it, it really is about giving service mm -hmm. and then it, it returns back to you in multitudes. Yes. It's, it's so many opportunities for that. So I do want our viewers to know that although, yes, you're looking to generate business, this is one of the ways that you do that because you're yes. giving something and then people will reach out to you. Mm -hmm. And then that's your opportunity to go into other things as you connect and network with that person. Mm -hmm. So it just expands your entire network. You know, I, I think that's a great, great concept. And you never know what's going to come of it, just like you and I collaborating for right. me. So I coached um, two speakers that got on a stage March 2020, the last, the last weekend that anybody could get on a stage because of the pandemic. And one talked about his nonprofit, which is bedlessness. So there are so many kids in the United States who do not have beds to sleep on mm -hmm. and how it started this whole idea. 
And then another one, she spoke about how dangerous cell phones are for our young kids and how she's gone from school to school and police officer, I mean, police station to spread that word. And so she said, I wept when I heard, April said, I wept when I heard Luke speak about this bedlessness problem. And I thought to myself, someday I'm going to be involved in that. And a year later, well, they became good friends because you have like eight or 10 or 12 or 16 or 24 who are going to be at this TEDx event. It might be an all day event or a third of a day or a half a day will depend on how many speakers. Well, there were 12 speakers and it becomes like a family because you're, you're having these practice sessions together and you're interested in each other's topic and you get to know each other as well. And that's something I facilitate as, as a coach. Um, so anyway, they both did, did great with their talks. And then, um, he reached out to her and asked her to work for him. And she said, yes, you bet. And just this morning, well, I'm, I got invited to participate in something in India. I'll be speaking on a really large stage in India oh, in wow, October. Congratulations. <laughs> and, um, Will is going to open an orphanage. He started, he started already the broken ground for an orphanage in India. And I thought an orphanage needs bed. So I reached out to Luke and April just this morning, the four of us were on a call. So there's power also in the people that you network with yes. the speakers or the speakers who know speakers, like almost every day I'm reaching out to someone who's given a TEDx talk or that I've met in a networking group like this, or, or then I'm finding new people who want to give TEDx talks because I do private coaching as well and group coaching in addition to helping on some stages. And that's how collaboration happens. So now this orphanage will eventually have these beds and it's also serving these young university students who'll get to do the service. And it's just a beautiful thing and you never know. So the specifics of that are not important. The idea that you collaborate, that you network is so yes. important. Yes. And it's all done from a humanitarian side of things. It's a global, it's a global event and it all started from well, this collaboration from me coaching them and knowing about them. And then I was, I was approached by this other person because I coached TEDx speakers. And so he wanted contact with some of them right. and you know, it just comes together. Wow. That, I mean, is amazing. that is amazing. There is so much power in networking. Yes. I can't yes. emphasize it enough. Um, and it just creates so much positive synergy. You know, you just want to, jump into whatever it is that you're doing and, and just it just gives you that extra charge you know when you network and you meet new people you know just same like you and i i mean it was when when you told me like yeah i want to be on your show i'm like oh my god yeah you know, <laughs> i i try to get you know any anybody that is going to give a good message for the view, viewers, something that they can take away and yeah. they can think about it and think, hey, you know what, maybe that's something I can do. Um, like you said, you never know who you're going to run into or uh, who you're going to meet or network and that person may be looking for you, you just never know. So that, exactly that's right. great. As you were talking, it reminds me of someone when I was first um, in the Silicon Valley, I met a billionaire uh -huh. and we remain friends to this day. And that's not the important part. It's just that you can learn things from them. And this is what yes. he taught me. And he said, the bigger your Rolodex, the bigger your bank account. Mm -hmm. And it's not like, oh, I just need these cards. And no, he has honest relationships and networking is really about building relationships. Yes, I can turn to April or Will or Luke or Tasha or any of those other people that I've spoken about and think, oh, just in fact, this Tasha who did the 800,000 just today, I was working with the client. I thought, oh, I need to connect them with her for this reason. And it's not always about TEDx. It's about because of TEDx that they're that you're connected. Yes. Wow. Wow. Well, but it opens you up to so many more authentic relationships. And those are just your speakers or your coaches, but then you often get a chance to meet people in the audience or they want to linger longer with you afterwards or yeah. they want. The, and, but I'm gonna say this all comes down to your idea. If Luke didn't have this fabulous idea of providing this nonprofit, I would never have reached out to him about it. Right. I would have never made the contact. Right, right. That That is, that is so awesome and, and just, 
your words related to network is it, it really is it's it's like a bible because you need it in every day really yeah. you need to network every day in order to keep your business alive and keep yourself just um enthusiastic about you know your next step and so well and certainly zoom has made that possible hasn't yes. it yes <laughs> yes i love zoom because you know i think before the pandemic it, it wasn't as popular obviously mm -hmm. but even now as we move out of the pandemic and more into normality zoom is just convenient you know you can stay at home and you can conduct your business you can reach out to anyone that has wi-fi or a phone and so it just makes that there's no reason that you you can't network with with somebody yeah. you know? and, and you just never know what they're going to say that's going to trigger a thought for you mm -hmm. um, i i think that you know the the collaboration part is awesome because these are friendships that you will have for you know as long as you want mm -hmm. you know their lifelong business relationships are usually like forever yes and 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 having you know um, mentors like you said your billionaire friend you're never gonna drop his number you're always gonna <laughs> have a connection with him because there's so much knowledge there it's it's it is about the the money, but it's about the information, you know, that he has that he can give to you, you know, to help you with your business. And so that that is really wow. I still you mentioned that I was a part of Christopher Kai's community, and I'll tell you one say one thing that I that I learned from Christopher. And that is to reach out to the those people in your Rolodex that are that are in here. I'm going to look up see if I can find it quickly the the mm -hmm. right way to say this. But I also teach university students. I teach a couple classes, and in one of them, I've given this challenge that I'm going to give your group now, if that's okay. Okay, sure. And um, so Christopher said, um, look in your phone right now, and this is what I say to my students now. And and Christopher's been delighted because I've reported on what's happened each semester. Uh -huh. who, who do you have? Like for me, it would be the billionaire or it would be the manager of this comedian or people like that, that, you know, have some influence or that have, you know, a wider reach in some way. And then just send them a text message and ask if they would, uh, this is what you say to them. Hi, George, I'm attending. Well, I'm listening to Paulette's thing right now, you know, Paulette's uh, Facebook live. Mm -hmm. And the speaker asked, who do I most admire and want to learn from? you immediately came to mind. Now he says it has to be authentic. You can't just say, oh, because it's the billionaire or because it's the manager of this comedian, that's who you reach out to. It has to be authentic. Um, then it says, would you love to schedule a 10, or would, would love to schedule a 10 minute call to learn more from you? Free next Tuesday, August or September 3rd at, um, that's not Tuesday, but anyway, you know what I mean? Right, um, right. That, that's the so same you would get the date and the time uh, when you're free. At 12 p.m. And then your time zone and the fact that you thought of them and that you give a specific and it's just a 10 minute they will almost always do it and but then you've got to be prepared first it's like getting out of your comfort zone to actually make that text right. send that text right mm -hmm. and then being being available at that time and, and being authentic and then being prepared to do like an informational interview with them wow Wow, that's a good word. And that's very, uh, it's a good tip. Uh, I'm actually going to do that myself. <laughs> yeah, it is. And then what comes of it? Now, when the students have, have done it, I offer it to the whole classroom of 25 students and usually two, one or two will take advantage of it. But those who do are the ones who get the internships or it changes their the course they're taking. I need, I'm, I have this gap here in my education. I need to do it. And it would be the same thing with us as entrepreneurs, reaching out to another, a notable entrepreneur or, or someone in our field or in our area of expertise right. and finding out, you know, it's, it's like, what's new this year? It's right. almost like asking them, right. the expert in, that would give a TED talk, right. then they share that with you. Right. Yeah. 
Well, let me know how it goes, Paulette. And if anybody else, I, does, know. Uh, I would I know. love to know. Definitely. Wow. Well, if there's, is there anything else you'd like to add? You've given us so much information that, wow. Yes. I have two more things I'd like to add. Number one is be coachable. We're so excited about what we think is great in our business or whatever, but find out what does what does the globe need right now that I can add to the conversation? So make sure you're thinking about the audience, about the organizers, about the whole event. And um, Anne did that, be very coachable and just an action taper, taker. Anne is someone who has now 1.8 million views that I happen to help her find the stage. So I, there are three parts with TEDx talk in my opinion, you know, landing the stage, rocking the talk, and then using it to grow your impact, your income, your, your credibility later, because it's on YouTube, but it's not going to go very far on YouTube if you don't have a great idea. And that's what I can help you with, um, and is, is frameworking that idea so that it's kind of rises above the others there. And people would rather listen to you talk about personal development than somebody else or real estate versus somebody right. else. Or especially, what makes you especially if you're, if you're talking to people within your network, it, it, the credibility is there. And so, or people within your page or what have you on social media, that's, that's your audience. Mm -hmm. And so that, that is really, uh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. So, and I, and I would love to help someone with that. If you know someone who is, who's ready. And the final thing is don't wait. And this is what I'm going to tell you that one of my speakers who got on the stage passed away 13 months later. Hmm. So I'm so glad that she pushed herself and went through and got that done because we never know what's yeah. going to happen. But yet what she talked about can live on. And yes. the daughter who was, who was behind is so grateful that it's there. It's there. Um, yes. I'm just thinking of one of my mentors who's day five in the hospital right now. And she had wanted to do a TEDx talk and hasn't done it yet and was asking me about it. And I'm just thinking, what if, what if that doesn't happen? Or as soon as she comes out, I'm going to talk to her again and, and say, let's get this get done. done. Yes. As much as she's spoken all over places, um, it's it's having that little link. It's so easy to share with people. Ted owns the link. It's only on. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching the show today. Thank you to my special guest, my Lisa Adams, thank you for all of your insight. Be sure to watch us next week for more information, more news, more sports. We're going to talk about all of it. But you know, when we have a special guest, we try to give that guest our undivided attention. So thank you so much again for watching, and we'll see you next week.